Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a variable AC compressor and how it works. Now the AC compressor is driven off of the accessory belt from the crank pulley and on this vehicle is located down underneath the alternator in here. So here I've got the compressor removed from the vehicle. Now this is a variable type AC compressor. So we've got the input and the outputs over here. We've got the wire that goes to the magnetic clutch which I've already got disassembled. Now the magnetic clutch has this top part here which has splines in it that will turn the AC compressor on the inside here and it normally sits outside here with a slight gap to this idler pulley on the inside here that just idles with the engine. Now when the magnetic clutch is engaged this is going to stick together and become one piece and engage the AC compressors internal. Now as you can tell the AC compressor is leaking quite a lot of dye which probably means that someone's been trying to diagnose this vehicle and it had an AC issue. So I'm just going to come in with my appropriately colored green underwear that I stole from my brother to wipe up that mess. Now this here is just a self-contained bearing inside of this pulley here that just idles with the engine and here we have the magnetic clutch assembly which contains a coil. Now when this coil gets energized it's going to create an electromagnet sucking this clutch to engage with the idler and thus it's going to turn the AC compressor with the speed of the engine. And thus we come to the disadvantage of the fixed displacement AC compressor in that it's very dependent on engine RPM. So for example if you're on the highway you're going to be pumping a lot of fluid through the system or if you're idling in traffic you won't be able to pump enough therefore a fixed type variable compressor only works within a certain range and this variable type is actually going to vary the amount coming out depending on the system need rather than just the engine RPM. Now if you guys remember my HVAC video gas refrigerant is going to be pressurized by the AC compressor and then be sent to the condenser where it changes phases into a liquid it'll then go through the dryer and the thermostatic expansion valve and then back into the evaporator where it changes back into gas refrigerant releasing cool air to cool the cabin. It'll then be cycled back around into the AC compressor to do the circuit all over again. Now once again this thing's leaking all over my studio so I'm just going to use my brother's underwear to sap this up. This is going to be a messy video. Next up I'm going to remove these hex bolts that go through the length of the AC compressor. And now with those bolts removed, I'm going to lift off the back half of the AC compressor and we can take a look at what we got here. Boy is it full of dye. Now I learned this trick from my brother, if one side of your underwear gets dirty, you can always flip it over and use the other side. And then on the third day, you can turn it inside out and use this side. And then on the fourth day, flip it over and use the last clean side. Now on the back side, we have the inlet and the outlet, and they lead to a chamber respectively, one on the outside here, and this one to the inside. Now in between those two, we have this electronically controlled valve, which is just a solenoid that'll regulate the pressures between the inlet and the outlet and it's electronically controlled through the AC computer on the vehicle. Finally on the bottom here we have this drain port to drain out any oil from the compressor or in my case all this dye that's dripping on my hands. Now these valves here align to the circle of the input side here from the pump in the middle here. If you flip this over we have another shim here and these has valves inside kind of built in and they will allow refrigerant to either go in or to exhaust out or block it all together and the outside circle of this aligns with the input of the AC refrigerant on the outside circumference of the back. So now if you thought the valve action was cool check out when I hook up the clutch and I turn it you can see how the pistons are moving up and down as I turn the AC compressor each piston takes its time to move the full stroke. So here we've got a cross section of the AC compressor here we've got the magnetic clutch assembly at the front here and that drives the shaft upon which the swash plate is rotating against. It's drawn here at an angle but it's allowed to change angles up to perpendicular through this journal pin mechanism over here. Now on the front side we have the ECV which controls the pressure and we've got the suction and discharge valves. We've got the piston that moves back and forth within this chamber and its maximum displacement is basically the width of this chamber. And now I'm going to pull off this housing here. You can see that we have our pistons, all six of them. They seem to be riding up on a ball joint here which is pretty cool. That allows for a little bit of articulation. We've got this gasket here. Now taking a look inside the AC compressor of course we have the pistons and they have this little seal on the outside here to help them seal up against this housing and inside of here we also have the spring which has a circlip that holds it together and finally we have the swash plate which is where it's mounted to Now that swash plate moves at an angle as I turn you can see that it moves back and forth and that's what creates the up and down motion for this piston to move inside of this housing ultimately creating compression to compress the refrigerant. There we go, remove that snap ring. So that freed up a little bit of spring pressure here. 
There we go. And here we have the swash plate mechanism. So now if we take a look at the heart of the AC compressor, we've got this little slider here. However, between them we do have a bearing that allows this axis, which is the central axis of the AC compressor, to rotate free from the swash plate. Now, right now, the swash plate and the axis of the AC compressor is 90 degrees. And therefore, as I rotate this, the pistons aren't going to be moving up and down anymore. Now, to get that angle, this variable AC compressor has an extra pivot point over here, where we have this side that's fixed, and this side can move. So if I compress this together here, you can see how it changes the angle. Now, changing the angle of this axis is what's going to give you a little bit of stroke on this piston. And if we can vary this angle, then we can vary the ultimate stroke of this piston and therefore the displacement and the amount of refrigerant that gets pumped through this AC compressor. So here I've got a little diagram and with the swash plate drawn at its maximum angle in the solid line here, because the connecting rod is a fixed length, it's going to move at its maximum stroke over here. Now if the angle changes and it's much shallower as you see here in the dotted line, then that's going to only allow the stroke of this piston to move this much here, effectively changing the displacement of this AC compressor. Now here's where it gets even more interesting, the angle of the swash plate isn't controlled by a motor or a mechanism or a solenoid directly. In fact, it's just controlled by the pressure, the pressure between the top of the piston and the bottom of the piston. And that's what's going to force this to change angle. Now to explain how the swash plate changes angle, we have the electronic control valve here, which applies a magnetic coil that'll close the high pressure valve. That's going to create a lot of pressure at the top of the cylinder on this little free body diagram. And that force is going to counteract the force behind it at the crankcase pressure and push the swash plate out in this direction to its maximum angle for maximum cooling. Now on the other hand, if we back off the electricity from that coil, it's going to open up the high pressure valve, reducing the pressure at the head of the piston relative to the pressure on the back side of the piston. And that's going to cause the swash plate to just return back using spring pressure to an almost 90 degree angle to its axis, giving a smaller stroke. Now that pressure is controlled through this electronically controlled valve over here, which has access to both the inlet and the outlet side, and sits just behind these valves. So if the AC compressor computer will tell the ECV to either decrease or increase the pressure on either side, it's therefore going to increase or decrease the pressure on either side of this piston here, and therefore compress or expand the angle of that swash plate in order to vary the amount of AC that's cycling through the system. Going to use some snap ring pliers to try to get this ECV out. That off. Okay, so I might have broke the connector here. There we go. I'm going to use my brother's underwear to clean that up. And you can see the electronically controlled valve has these little holes on it to allow the refrigerant to go through it or to bypass it. And it's got this little filter on the top of it too. Now if we take a look at the AC control system on this G35, it starts at the HVAC unit on the dashboard. And that's going to send a signal out to the electronic control valve to vary the swash plate angle according to the AC demands from its inputs. We've also got a signal going out to turn the compressor on, which gets sent to the body control unit, the engine control module, and the power distribution module before turning on the magnetic clutch to engage the compressor. We've also got a refrigerant pressure sensor which sends a signal back through the AC unit to be controlled as a closed loop control system. Alright, we're going to see what's inside this coil now. Well, you guys wanted to see what's inside the AC coil? And there it is. It's basically a bunch of small little coils coiled up. So the next time you turn on the air conditioning on your car, think of all these components that are inside just to make it work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.